The Gold Owls is back the nfl trade deadline right around the corner in this video i have trades that could actually go down at any given time very realistic trade scenarios excited to break them down excited to see which ones happen let's get started starting with zedaria smith who we all expect to be dealt and the lions being that front runner a week ago i talked about that he's more likely to be dealt than not watch out for the lions but a lot of teams need a pass rusher would be careful with him because smith even though he's a veteran he's solid declining does have durability concerns with the Lions. Could use a good veteran here to replace Aiden Hutchinson, even though replacing him exactly is uh, impossible, near impossible. But this seems likely. And again, I'd be careful with trading because the Browns want an early day three pick. I'd be, I would not trade a fourth round pick. I'd be hesitant with the fifth. The Lions very likely want to trade, prefer to trade a 2026 draft pick rather than this year. The Browns have to agree to it though. But I'll predict a 2026 Fifth round pick, it could be a 2026 fourth round pick since it's a year later, but that's a little rich for me. This makes the most sense right now, and this is borderline rich because I worry about him coming in and then having those durability concerns, but it's something the, the Lions are in the driver's seat right now. They need to add someone because they're the type of team that should be making deals at the deadline because they are in the driver's seat to potentially contend win that Super Bowl. So this is one that I am expecting. We'll see what that compensation is when it happens here, but a lot of teams looking for a pass rusher. We'll talk about that, but does someone else swoop in and get Zedaria Smith? Instead of, instead of the Lions, we will see. Got a KJ Osborne trade here. It's interesting because I do feel like, based on the buzz, KJ Osborne will be dealt. But trying to figure out that landing spot, who needs a receiver the most or who's most likely to trade for a receiver, maybe the Steelers. I have something else in mind for the Steelers, but they could land KJ Osborne. And we kept hearing these, these reports that the Broncos are involved in the deadline, and now we're hearing these reports that they're likely to stay put. They feel good about their roster. But a couple things. Total Sean Payton move to say, we're fine, we're good, and then make a move. That's one. Uh, and then just today, they got shellacked by the Ravens, and they desperately, it shows once again, that they need another receiver, and it shows every time they more every time they play a pretty good team. Cortland Sutton's a dog. They need someone else. Osborne play would pair pretty well with him, in my opinion. I would love a guy like Adam Thielen for them. That's possible. Tyler Boyd's possible. Mike Williams doesn't make a ton of sense to me, uh, but those guys are possible. But maybe they're more likely to go the cheaper route. Um, and you see a swap of picks would be my prediction here. It could just be straight up a seventh or straight up a sixth. But I'll predict this, KJ Osborne and a seventh round pick going to the Broncos, a sixth round pick for the Patriots. They move up. This scenario makes a little more sense in the Patriots and the Broncos case, really. Uh, sometimes teams prefer, both teams prefer this because you, the Broncos don't lose a pick and then the Patriots move up around rather than just gaining a seventh round pick. So that's why you see these deals quite a bit. I expect the Patriots to deal Osborne. It's just a question of where to. I think teams teams like the Broncos, teams like the Steelers, the first they're going to try to go for the Adam Thielens, right? Maybe it's Mike Williams. I don't love Mike Williams for the Broncos, but it could be the case here. And then maybe option B is a KJ Osborne. But he's a pretty decent young player. Had some flashes with Minnesota. Uh, the Patriots have a million options. They're not the greatest options. They have a million options. So maybe he could revive his career once again if he goes elsewhere. The Broncos, for sure, could use him. Could be smoke that they're staying put at the deadline. Staying on board with the Patriots here, possibly being sellers. They could trade their defensive tackle, Devon Godshaw. Sending him to the Niners here. I thought of teams like the Bengals, definitely a possibility. The Niners, I think they're going to try to get a defensive tackle. I'm back and forth. Do I predict them to get Godshaw? This is the kind of option A. And Sebastian Joseph Day, who was on the Niners before, that is a possibility in a much cheaper option. So that is a pretty good prediction. That was kind of my prediction the whole time. But I'm thinking the Niners might need a little more juice here, right? But the question is, do the Patriots actually want to trade him? Because they like him. They like him paired with Barmore when he's you know in there, obviously. And that's the tricky part because a fifth-round pick is probably what he's worth. Patriots may not accept that, and a team may not be willing to give that up because a fifth-round pick isn't a premium draft pick. But right now, this time of the year, it kind of is. You see what uh, Deontay Johnson went for, a swap of picks. So, I mean, I could see him go for like a fifth-seven swap or a sixth-round pick. It's going to be a really good steal. Yeah, does a team want to give that up, though? He's not getting a ton of production getting after the quarterback. I think the Patriots are a little more willing with the loss today, the Titans, to trade him away. The Niners would be a great fit. They need an interior defensive lineman. Like I said, watch out for Sebastian Joseph Day. 
uh, not both they wouldn't get, but one or the other. But this trade makes some sense with a fifth-round pick going to New England, the Niners getting that defensive tackle that they could use. They could be in the market for a pass rusher as well. And the receiver talk is dying down a little bit, but you never know. The Niners do have some spending money, but they do want to have, they want a lot of that cap to roll over. Uh, to spend on Brock Purdy in the future there. So we'll see if they target a pretty solid defensive tackle like Godshaw. The Steelers trading for a wide receiver has been the talk for, I mean, how long now? So it's bound to happen. The question is, which receiver do they trade for? And maybe a couple days ago, even last week, the week before that, I was saying Mike Williams, and it very well could be Mike Williams. That could be a really good prediction. The Jets... I don't know if they really want to keep him. I think they're just trying to get more out of teams because they were probably getting offered dirt cheap, you know, but the Steelers might turn around and go for someone a little better. I talked about recently Tyler Boyd, who they liked in the offseason, definitely could be something there for, for um, the Steelers to add. Do the Titans may want to keep him. They just got a win today. Adam Thielen, I would love this, and it couldn't make sense. The Panthers held him out of playing again. They won. They like their young receivers right now. Uh, Leggett, what's his health at right now? I think he'll be okay. But they're about to go to Germany. Does Thielen want to make that trip even? So maybe they're just more likely to just send him away right now because they feel like they have good young receivers they want to continue to work with and they're not going to win by the time Thielen is you know washed up. They're going to be winning probably and he's got another year on his contract. So just ship him away, shed that last year. It makes a lot of sense. And I think Thielen's worth more than a six-round pick and the Steelers would be wanting to trade a next-year pick most likely. Could be this year. So that's where I came up with the 2026 pick. But... I mean, this is less than his value, but I think it's very, very realistic. The Panthers just looking to sell, sell, sell. Um, you know, they don't have a ton of leverage here. They just might be willing just to get rid of that last year of the contract, even though it's not super expensive. And he would fit really well at Russell Wilson and be that slot receiver for the Pittsburgh Steelers. But sometimes Arthur Smith doesn't love slot receivers. He likes the big guys. So maybe go for Mike Williams. And again, I would like to Tyler Boyd fit. I think Thielen and Mike Williams are the ones to watch. I was certain about Mike Williams, but now I'm thinking, God, maybe it's just more of me thinking this would be awesome. Uh, and the Panthers are a little more likely to do it now because they like their young receivers stepping up, but we'll see. Uh, the the Somebody, Broncos, not just the Steelers, but somebody could get a steal on Adam Thielen given what, you know, Deontay Johnson, what's going on right now. But this is the scenario I had in mind for Pittsburgh, Carolina, Adam Thielen. Aziz Ajalari is one being hyped up a ton when it comes to the trade deadline candidates because he is solid. He's solid. He's young. He has upsides playing very well right now. And, I, you know, the Giants, I would recommend keeping him, but he, is an exp he has an expiring deal. Their focus is Brian Burns, Kayvon Thibodeau, even though Ajalari is outplaying Thibodeau as, as he's been out. But so I guess I understand it, but you cannot give him away. You know, they cannot give him away. And he's a hot topic right now. The Falcons are in on him. We hear the Bengals are really in on him. The Cardinals, the Cardinals have his brother. We know it's going to be a fit. I would love the Cardinals. I talked about it before the season. Cardinals and Adjulari, uh, you know, and I can see the Ravens being, I can see multiple teams being in. The Eagles have been talked about, I think they're a little less likely. So it's tough to pick out one right now. I'm going to go with the Falcons, and they might be the most desperate, and that's debatable because who needs, you know, looking at on paper, who needs one the most? given injuries and everything, it's probably the Cardinals, but the Cardinals are a little hesitant. They've been drafting really well. They are playing really good football right now, but you know, they're they're and they have the cap space for the future to sign Ajilari. They have the brother his brother there. Um, so I can make that make a lot of sense as well, but they're a little hesitant trading away draft picks. The Falcons and the Bengals need Hendrickson needs help, but they do have bodies in there that that are supposed to be able to play better. The Falcons trade for Matthew Judon. He's underwhelming, still probably their best guy. Um Ebba Ketty actually had a sack today. You know, so do they stay put? But they're desperate. They're trying to win right now. They have veterans led by Kirk Cousins. They didn't draft over overly well either, maybe. It's to be determined still. But are they going to care about their draft picks right now? And Judon, they're not going to re-sign next year, it feels like, right now. They're going to need a guy. They're going to need multiple guys that they want to sign. So trade for Ajilari, sign him. It makes more sense for the more, more of the contender, which I guess Falcons and Bengals and Cardinals all could be playoff contenders, you know, and the Ravens, of course, more than a playoff contender. The Falcons are more of the contender right now. Uh, it feels like the Falcons, that is. So uh, figure out the compensation. I think most people would say a fifth round pick. It could be. I think the Giants would rather do this. I think they got to demand a little bit more. I know he has an expiring deal, but he's playing really well for them. But it is scary because he does have durability concerns. So I considered... Again, different teams in the Falcons, and I also consider just straight up Aziz for a fifth-round pick. I came up with this, though, a fourth and a seventh back to the Falcons. Maybe I'm get a little too creative. It's not super creative, but uh, essentially the same as a fifth-round pick. So watch out for those. Watch out for a couple different teams. 
Um, I've been back and forth on the team. I really have been. Yeah, I've been I've been team Cardinals for that for a while, and then I was leaning Falcons like last night when I was I think about making this video, and um, just seeing Hendrickson go off for the Bengals but not getting much help, and the Bengals are win that game and their 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 offense is clicking. It makes a lot of sense for them as well. Um, you know, so it's a little tricky. It could create a, like a domino effect. I don't know if that's the right phrase. Where if the Bengals get him and the Falcons maybe get someone else, or if the Falcons get him, like I'm sort of predicting here, it's kind of split evenly, and the Bengals can get someone else, which we'll talk about here in a second. But this is probably the actually the people won't act like it, but it's probably the biggest name to watch right now. I would not recommend a team that's not contending going for him because he's on an expiring deal. I think you only do that if you're desperate and you are some sort of playoff contender here. So big name to watch there as he's playing pretty well. Bengals very well could get Aziz Ajilari. They could get Baron Brown. There's a couple other. If the Panthers are willing to trade Clowney, it sounds unlikely now, but possible. Uh, you know, they got to get, they're going to they're gonna try to get someone here. I haven't heard anything about them getting Clayus Campbell, but this is just kind of a, a if. If they miss on Ajilari, they could get Campbell for pretty cheap. Six round pick, or you get a six, seventh swap. Possibly a seventh round pick. Probably that. that's a little too cheap, probably. Um, so six made some sense. The Dolphins lost once again. They're still going to try to win. The offense is there. They, they they probably should. If you could argue, they should have won the last two games since Tua came back. But you know, they could just look to get some picks here. He's on an, ex an expiring deal. He's kind of cheap for whoever's you know, trying to afford him. They could afford him. So uh, it, I just, they like uh, – Ajilari a lot different, right? He's a lot different. But the Bengals like their physical defensive ends, you know, and a guy that can slide inside. So he can help in multiple ways. He can pair really well with Hendrickson, with Hubbard. Um, you know, because you still want – even though Hubbard's been disappointing, you still want to play him. And you don't want a guy that's on the field every play like Hendrickson or, you know – high percentage plays to just remove Hubbard completely. So this actually could make some sense here. So that's a guy since the Dolphins lost again to watch. The Bengals are definitely a team to watch. Could they get Adjulari instead? It'd be bigger. It's a, it's a different type of player, different type of pass rusher. We will see. We're not done with the Bengals yet, though. I'd say now we can start watching out for a running back, actually, when it comes to the Bengals. There's a couple that are available. I think ETN's a little bit more of a long shot, but that'd be wild. I don't think the Bengals value the running back position like that. We saw what they did with Joe Mixon. They probably regret that. They definitely regret that right now. Uh, I'd watch out for Khalil Herbert not playing for the Bears right now. He has some starting experience, or like high-end rotation experience. He's looked pretty good in the past, and he's their third running back, or even lower than that right now. Uh, and then Zach Moss dealing with an injury. They do have Chase Brown, Izzy, and every down back they could use another piece in there miles sanders honestly i think he'd be better i think he fits more with the bengals so i wanted to plug sanders in here watch out for him as well but he does have multiple years on his contract and of course you could shed that you wouldn't clear all of it it just doesn't it's not really a bengals move to trade at the trade deadline in general but they're gonna do it i think this time but then you have to take a step further in trading for a guy that has multiple years on his contract I think Sanders would be good with them, but I, I don't know if they go that far. So, Chloe Herbert made a little more sense. And this, again, uh, could be just like Clayus Campbell. It could be a swap of picks. Uh, seventh round pick makes some sense. The Bears just looking to you know get some picks. They like trading picks usually. Uh, so, Herbert, this one makes a lot of sense. Even though maybe it seems like the Raiders need them a little bit more, but who the Bengals just beat today. But they're not in buy mode. So, Herbert... Uh, for a seventh round pick, the Bears trade uh, their young running back there. One that's kind of out of nowhere, uh, kind of from the rafters for me right now, but it's definitely an interesting one. Sticking with the Bears possibly being sellers, which they've been buyers it felt like recently, but the Texans badly need a guard, and they would maybe love to have a guy like Brandon Scherf. Would the Jags trade him there? Maybe. The rival trades are more likely these days. Uh, but Nate Davis is like the more known available guard. Man, when he was on the Titans, he was really good, but Vrabel had issues with him, and he goes to the Bears, and there's issues with him like showing up to practice or practicing and um, and not really playing that great. But the Bears' offense alignment, you know, they have a bunch of offense linemen that didn't really play great for them, or they had, you know, and then they go somewhere else and they play a little bit better coaching or quarterback play or the unit play of the offense line. I don't know what it is. So you possibly could play better elsewhere. That's what teams could think. Uh, and he could have a number of takers. Uh, Ravens. Steelers, Giants, I don't know if they're buyers right now. A number of takers. The Texans could be pretty desperate for a guard right now, so it makes sense. Could be a seventh-round pick. Could be a swap of picks. You know, six going to the Bears, seventh going to the Texans. Definitely very similar here. This makes a little more sense, but pretty even. So that is definitely one to watch. Nate Davis is one to watch. The Bears would love to get rid of him. At the same time, the Bears are need a guard, and they're injured at guard. 
Not because they're injured. I think both. They need a guard and they're injured at guard right now. So it is a little ah, but it just it, the connection just hasn't worked out. So it's definitely another one to watch. The Bears could be sellers from some small pieces and gain some you know later draft picks that they haven't really had. Re, and you know looking at last year, so one to watch. All right, let's talk about it. This big one. Marshawn Latimer has been a star corner for some time. At times, you could consider him the top corner at football if he's healthy. He is hurt right now, and he does have the durability concerns. That is a concern. Several teams have called on Marshawn Latimer. More, you know, I could see, I could see the Bengals. We talked about the Bengals adding a pass rusher, multiple different ones, a defensive lineman, a running back. We had scenarios adding a pass rusher and a running back. I could see them adding a cornerback as well. There's other teams, Ravens maybe, uh, but the Chiefs we know have called and they make sense. They they run a lot of man coverage and cover two. That's what the Saints run. You know, they run a lot of two man under. So it would be a perfect, perfect fit. We know they have called. There are some obstacles, multiple obstacles here, which make this an interesting one and. Maybe you could argue not as likely as it's being talked about, but I think it's possible. Obstacles are the Chiefs. This is not really a Chiefs trade, even though he's a great fit. He's got multiple years on his deal. They didn't pay Snead. He's pretty pricey. He's not He's not going to cost him a lot this year. He's going to cost like $16 million or so in the future, and they can get rid of that, but not all of it. There's a $2 million bonus. That's just not. A, I know it's cheaper, but it's not really a Chiefs move, but they are all in on a three-peat perhaps, and it would be a good fit. He does have durability concerns, though, so how much do they value him? Uh, and then do this. The Saints are stubborn. They they just lost to the Panthers today. They should be sellers, but will they be? They have they're attached to Lattimore, but they have a number of good corners. They have the young corners. They know how to find new ones. They should be willing to move on. They would shed the 16 million. They need that. You have an out on shedding a lot of money without restructuring and kicking more money down the road. They should do this. And the more and more I think about it, his value is a little less than we all think. To me, Lattimore's talent, second round pick. You factor in the durability concerns third round pick you got to factor in he has multiple years on his contract the saints would should love a team to help them and shed that and the team bringing him in he has multiple years on his contract they can't clear all of it there is uh you know a roster bonus on that deal so it's just not in teams um you know it's not their philosophy it's usually not the chiefs to do that so i know it's not the end of the world if they cut him in the future or rework his deal and they lose out a little bit but it's a thing it's a thing the chiefs Limited on picks this year, but they're still buying right now because they're going for the three-peat. They're a little limited next year. They're missing a sixth and a seventh. I think they would love to trade a 2026 pick. I was originally thinking third round, but be given the circumstances, the Saints should be full-on sellers. They should love to sell the salary here for the future, and, the, and it's a little bit of a risk because durability concerns. He's currently injured. And again, the future years that have a roster bonus on it. So fourth round pick, believe it or not, makes some sense. Third round pick makes sense. I could see a scenario where it's a steal. It's a fourth and a seventh. It's a fifth, something like that. The Chiefs probably would rather do. They don't want to give up multiple picks probably. So um, the Bengals, a possibility as well. They have more picks to work with, with than the Chiefs. So I definitely could see that. Um, should they be all in about being that type? It's not their move either to get a guy with multiple years on his deal, has durability concerns. So very interesting to watch. The Saints should be selling. This is an out. I know he's great. I love Marshawn Lattimore, you know, for sure. They got young corners. Kool-Aid McKintree is just one of the future, but they have young corners other than that. They know how to draft them. I would do it. I would do it. If it's less than a fourth-round pick, I would not do it. Uh, you don't want to get low ball, but it's a very interesting one here. Maybe a little less likely because the obstacles than the others, but it's picking up some steam here. And this one, I haven't really heard about a specific landing spot for Brandon Scherf, and maybe it's not as likely as the others, but this one makes a lot of sense. The Jags are selling right now. They got rid of Cam Robinson. They're loading up on draft picks. They can load up on more. Scherf is older. He is on an expiring deal. Yes, you'll get a compensatory pick, but that wouldn't be till 2026. The Jags aren't waiting till then. They want to turn around now. They have loads of picks, get more, build around Trevor Lawrence, quick turnaround. We see it from teams all the time. Are they even going to extend him? Trade him now. They could get a third-round pick because he's a veteran, good, experienced guard. Expiring deal. Robinson went for less than expected. They paid salary. He has durability because there's probably a fourth-round pick. I could see a third, a third, and then maybe the team like the Ravens would get something back. Ravens offensive line isn't as good as past years. They could definitely use a guard. Could they go for a Nate Davis? That's a way cheaper, way lesser of a guard. Andrews Pete got injured otherwise uh, today, so otherwise I would say maybe him. Still watch out for him, but this would be a big one. The Ravens are serious. Even today, I thought the pocket was collapsing from the interior, and Lamar couldn't really get out of it, and that 
You ever hear that? I mean, it was only a couple times, but Lamar couldn't, you know, it collapsed that badly. It was more early in the game against the Broncos, but last week, Dolphins, the same thing against the Browns. Uh, this makes a lot of sense. It's not being talked about, so maybe it doesn't happen. It makes a lot of sense for both parties here both sides it's a Ravens thing to trade for veteran guys that can help them and also have expiring deals they don't want guys with two three four years left on their on their deal obviously so uh, they can bring them back next year they have the freedom or they can get a compensatory pick for them and the Jaguars load up on picks already loaded they get more help themselves to turn it around quicker than expected and one more here you know I don't know if the Broncos trade Baron Browning, to be honest. It's, it keeps being talked about. Maybe they would like to keep him. They like guys better. He has durability concerns. He got a tripping call earlier today. Not that it's anything to do with it, but I keep hearing it so much that it's certainly possible, and I couldn't end this video without giving the Cardinals a pass rusher because they badly need one. And again, Aziz Ajilari is pretty much, for me, split three different ways. Falcons, Cardinals, Bengals, so they could end up with him. Um, there aren't a ton of fits. Preston Smith could get traded somewhere. I don't know if the Cardinals go for the long-time bet. Maybe the Falcons would do that. Um, maybe, maybe the Bengals would do that. The Bengals, definitely a possibility. Uh, but I like the fit here. It feels like a Jonathan Gannon type of guy. He's young, so he could be part of their... like. Is there, the Cardinals are winning right now, but they're still like a near-future team, so it makes a lot of sense. Fifth-round pick makes sense. I actually think he has a lot more upside than that, but durability concerns... You know, and just still learning the position because he was an off-ball linebacker. So uh, I thought that made sense. I think this one may be a little less likely than the other ones, the ones we started off with. Uh, but yeah, possible. I didn't do a Preston Smith. Now I'm thinking, yeah, Preston Smith to the Bengals is definitely a possibility. We had Clayus Campbell as a possibility. Ajilari, it's a big one to watch. It kind of creates a... If he goes here, then it's like, okay, this guy might go here then. It's kind of one of those situations. So very interesting trade line. It's already been very, very active, and it's going to be more active here, uh, maybe even tonight. So I wanted to get this video up. Uh, so we will see what happens here. Uh, follow us on X slash Twitter because we're up to date with the latest news and, and analysis during games. Uh, but we'll, have, we'll try to have more videos and winners and losers if there's enough deals here. And then we'll have our Week 10 content. So join us for all that. Like, subscribe to Nolf Zombie. Much, much appreciate it. It's going to do it. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.